Okay, so I have, um, there's some, I'm gonna talk about video games a little bit, and I just wanna make sure you're all familiar with the process for how to install Grand Theft Auto 5. Please pay attention. <laughs> that was informative for you guys. Let's see if we can... Did you make that one? <laughs> uh, I did not make that. Oh man, this is gonna be awful. Okay, I need internet, I changed my mind. Alright. Can you guys see this alright? Okay, I'll, I'll start like this while we're waiting for internet. This is, this is the power of the cloud, it sort of still works offline. Uh, so the, the title of this talk is Troll Everyone, and um, I, I guess I'm kind of going to be talking a, a combination of the last few talks. So very much like Christina, I, I specialize in social engineering, so I have a few stories about social engineering. I think it's pretty uh, relatable, you guys uh, will, will like it. Um, and also I, I'm going to try and have like a conversation with you guys, so please participate with me, please talk to me. I promise I will reward you if you do so. So, you're probably like, who the F is this guy? Uh, I'm really just another human making my way through the world doing random things. Uh, obviously, I speak publicly from time to time. Uh, I run something called a red team. Uh, I work at Salesforce. They have given me lots of money to spend on basically just coming up with ways to break them over and over and over and over and over. And what we do is something called full scope, YOLO swag, no holds bars, uh, 360 headshot pen testing, that is the official term. Uh, but basically what that means is that there, there is no really things that are out of the possibility of what we can do. So anything that's possible is okay to do. If we have to commit a felony in the process of doing it, uh, we normally ask legal first, and from time to time they say yes. Can we forge some US documents to get a fake code signing certificate? Yes, sure, whatever it takes. Um, I'm also a, a CTFer. I would, um, I know it sounds a little vulgar, if you're not familiar with that. Uh, what that is, is there's, there's games, right? Hacking games, and that's how I got my start. This is a uh, kind of the, the abridged version, but playing CTF, losing a lot, eventually getting better, winning a lot, and then suddenly people will give you jobs based on that. Uh, so we'll talk more about this. Obviously I'm a pretty cool guy, I have my own custom avatar uh, that's proof that I'm really technical and smart. Let's see, are we, are we online? This is, we'll just do it like this, I don't care. So really, who are you actually? And um, I'm, I'm actually asking that, like, if I don't know any of you, and I don't know really why you're here, uh, can I get a show of hands? So, does anyone in here have a passion, something they care about? It doesn't have to be security. Lots of passionate people, maybe. Uh, is anyone's passion here security? Let's get it. Cool, some people are, how about like, programming? Okay, cool. Matt? Uh, does anyone have like an idea of what they're gonna do, like with your life? Sort of. Basically, no. Sort of. Okay. Does anyone kind of have a plan on what they're gonna do next? Sort of. Okay. Cool. So, um, what if rhetorical questions really do require an answer? Uh, why are you here, <laughs> Pichu? Why are you here? Why did you come here today? Why are you sitting in that seat? I am actually an alumni and I'm here to kind of just engage with fellow students here on top of also 
in the group and live in more than that once a year. Cool. Why are you here? You. Who's here? Why are you here? Yeah. It's on my Cool. Okay, cool. So, does anyone else want to say why why they're here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm here, obviously, I feel like I don't know much yet, but I'm here to kickstart that and, and to borrow the word passion, like, kind of foster that and, and take ownership of this craft and uh, hopefully get a little bit of Cool. Cool. Sweet. So, hopefully, some of you are exploring the idea of doing hacks as a career, right? Anyone seen the show Mr. Robot? I personally haven't, but I heard it's good. <laughs> so I thought this was funny. What if I told you Mr. Robot is just the Matrix without robots and Kung Fu? <laughs> it actually sounds kind of boring then. But that is largely what you can make a career out of, and it is a thing. So I actually got my start, my, my root, root, root start when I was like 12 years old. Uh, hacking video games. Anyone play Diablo 2, Diablo 3 ever? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Nice. Anyone play Diablo 1? Some. Sweet. Okay. Did anyone cheat at Diablo 1? Fuck yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, I did a lot of cheating at Diablo 1. So, the, in the game, playing it kind of looks like that sometimes, but most of the time, it was looking like this for me. Right? Items need higher attack stats. Items need more sockets. Uh, and eventually, you know, you because you were able to, I mean, it's just a save game for people who aren't familiar. Diablo 1, little, little game, you walk around and you hit stuff with a sword. Right? And the original one had this, this design that was, if you played in single player mode, you could go online at certain points. And you could play with other people online. But your character was actually saved to the computer. So it's just a file, it's just ones and zeros. If you figure out where in the file. You can edit something, you can change how much gold you have, you can give yourself items, you can make items that don't really exist to the game, and then you're kind of playing this, um, this scenario over and over where you're trying to edit yourself to be so powerful but not make the game break because it would do that very frequently and just choke on because you've messed it up too much. And uh, there was actually lots of duels between people on who could hack their character like harder and better. Because <laughs> you have everyone just super, super maxed out, so you have to actually be better than other people at making your character really, really good without breaking the game. Now, you just had a whole talk about social engineering, but there was, there was some trolley hacks in Diablo and all the way, probably still now. Uh, my favorite was item duping, but not actually item duping. Saying I had item dupes, saying, hey, I am able to clone your stuff. And a lot of times people will be like, okay, give me your item, I'm going to dupe it, and then just quit the game. That's kind of like, what was way better was, oh yeah, I wrote this program that duplicates oh, items for you. And it could be malware, it could be anything, it could give you control over their system, but the very best one was as soon as they ran it, it popped back into the game, ran them to the corner, and threw all their items on the ground. <laughs> so that's, I think, probably how I got started in social engineering, and I was on the receiving end of that the first time. I was like, fuck, <laughs> that sucks. So what I decided to do was like, well, I can write a program that does that, so I wrote one, and I started getting back and re resupplying all my items. So uh, I think you guys have a good idea what phishing is. Uh, so I don't really need to, to intro this. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a historical lesson <laughs> on a really good social engineering. Raise your hand if you've seen this before. Yeah. So basically, in this chat, if you can't if you can't read it, someone's like, hey, if you type your password in, it will show up as all stars. <laughs> Someone and they're like star 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 C. The next guy in the chat, Hunter Two, clearly his password. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, doesn't look like stars to me. <laughs> And then he's like, oh, all I, all I see is stars. And the guy's like, really? He's like, absolutely. And then it goes on. <laughs> he's like, you can go Hunter 2, my Hunter 2 and Hunter 2. Haha, <laughs> does that look funny to you? They're like, yeah, when you type Hunter 2, it shows to us as star, 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 star. <laughs> <laughs> that's neat, that's neat. And then he's like, wait, ben, how do you know my password? And he's like, oh, I just copied the stars, and since it's your password, it <laughs> displays it to you again later. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Essentially, this happens because people want to trust other people, and uh, a lot of people don't know a lot about computers. Um, 
You want to hear a story? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so two stories. One, one time I was pretending to be XYZ Joe IT guy, and I already had access to his email, and I'm in his email, but I needed someone else. And I decided I wanted to target them, so I called them up, pretended to be them, and I'm basically just saying, hey, I need you to download and run this really sketchy thing. And it's, it's really weird, like super obvious. And I'm on the phone with them, and they're like, oh, okay, sure, sure. And then right before they clicked it, they said, is this a security test? And I said, no. And they said, okay, they're always testing us. And in my head, I'm like, well, yes, <laughs> this is a security test. Second story about how far it can go and how actually more advanced than, hey, run this. One time I called up the target and I said, I'm Abram Liz Creed Koff, and I work at this very cool interior design magazine. And your offices look beautiful from the pictures we saw, and we want to come interview you, and we want to take pictures of your office, and we want to include you in this magazine article with other cool companies like Twitter and, and Facebook. And they're like, yes, yes, they're a small startup. Like, yeah, of course, come, come do this. This is awesome. It's going to be great publicity. So I show up there, my partner has a camera and he's taking pictures, except he's taking pictures of the security systems and he's taking pictures of kind of locks around the door and he's taking pictures of post-it notes on computers and they didn't really think that was weird. And I go through the whole thing, I interview this guy, I'm talking about everything, I'm trying to get little details and then at the end I go, oh, crap, I actually, we've been taking pictures this whole time and you never signed the photo consent form. He says, oh, oh, yeah, just, can you email it to me? I'm like, actually, I have it on a flash drive right here. And he's like, okay, I hand him the flash drive. He plugs it into his computer. Now, if I had some really advanced attack, that could, it could do stuff for me. But this was not an advanced attack in that case. It's just a bunch of folders. And I'm like, oh, man, sorry, my flash drive is a mess. Do you, do you mind if I find the file? He's like, yeah, sure. Deep dive into five or six different folders deep, double-click my malware, double-click a PDF, Open it up, have him print it for me, have him sign. Now I have access to his computer, and I say, hey, is it cool if I chill out here? And he's the CFO of the company, and he's like, yeah, it's cool, you can chill. So they let me sit in that office all day with access to his computer, on my computer, three feet away. And then I went home and, of course, had access for the next two months. So, um, yeah. so part of the red teaming stuff, that we do at Salesforce, it's very similar to the consulting stuff like Christina talked about where you're hiring this external company. But uh, I work internally and we have our own team, so our engagements, I think someone asked this at the end of it, our engagements end up lasting three months, typically. So it's actually a really, really, really long time and we get to do these kind of things very slowly. It's probably because we're bad. So, a bit of advice. If you're looking to get into stuff like this, you're looking to get better, you're looking to level up, don't be afraid to fail. If you think that this guy nailed this on the first try, you would probably be mistaken. And I have a story about failing. So one time, instead of using an email, I used the chat messenger service to try and get someone to engage with me, and then hopefully have them run something for me. So I'm pretending to be this guy here on the right, and it's like four in the afternoon. Like, hey, got, or no, it's 1.50 something in the afternoon. I'm like, hey, got a sec? And then later that night, she's like, hey, sorry, I just saw this, what's up? Now, this is like, this is like seven or eight o'clock in the evening, so I'm thinking, great, this person is on their work laptop, and they're at home, and I will be able to clearly convince them that I'm this person because, like, they're at home. They have no way of checking. Uh, so I'm like, hey, you're still, you're still online? Cool. And then something weird happens. Yep, is this James, the guy I'm pretending to be? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Haha. -ha. I'm thinking, like, okay, maybe something's afoot. So I'm like, okay, actually, I'll just talk to you tomorrow. And she's like, no, really, who is this? I'm standing right next to James right now. So I'm pretending to be this guy, and he's standing next to the person that I'm trying to target. So, failure, right? 
Did that stop the test? No, because you can just delete that Google Plus profile and then make a new one. <laughs> Failure is totally fine, and this applies to everything, right? So if you're going to do something, you're going to try and become better at something. Don't my next slide. Don't try and learn about it forever. Stop learning. I know you're in school. Stop learning. Start doing, because you will fail. And it will be okay, and you will learn things, and then you can come back again and again and again and again until you get it right. And you are going to learn way, way, way more by doing than you ever would by trying to learn about something. Because when you try and learn about stuff, you get ideas about stuff. But you don't actually have experience with that thing. You just have a collection of opinions. But when you try and speak about something like that, or you try and engage or engage an interviewer and say, hey, I really know about this stuff. I've been studying it. I've been trying to learn it. It's not, it's not going to translate. And it's probably not going to work out super well. Um, as you can see, I really put a lot of um, preparation into this. And uh, uh, I have a demo for you guys. So imagine that, um, that, that thing I just showed you, where, where they knew it was fake. Imagine that that worked. And the end result would be I would send them a file, they would click it, and I'd have access to their system. I'd be able to sit there and type on it, just like the CFO that let me sit in his office. Now, okay, I think you guys are going to know this. What's, uh, what's the easiest way to get someone's password? <clears throat> ask them. Now, if you can't physically, personally ask them, and most people know that now, you can always just make their computer ask them. So. I discovered that OSX has this really cool scripting language called OsaScript, which allows you to drive uh, the UI, basically. And you can do something where you can tell any window of any program to just start and display a pop-up box with a text field in it, and it says whatever you want. And the operating system does it. It looks pretty legit. I'll, I'll show you what this looks like. So this is just a script to help me do demos. Um, it basically picks an application, gives me the, the thing that I need to type. Uh, I'm going to do, let's see, the first one. So this is already in my clipboard, but this is the command here that I would type if I had access to your computer. And when I type that in, <coughs> this happens. Something starts bouncing. What's this? Oh. System preferences requires my password to finish applying updates. Uh, type my password in here, get those updates applied. <laughs> and then you can see here that the text returns is my obviously real password. Now, I've used this every time, and it has worked every time. Uh, it has never once failed. No one has ever not type their password in. Because if they ever click like escape and that box goes away, I'll just paste it in again. And, and they'll get annoyed and they'll eventually type their password in. And that will be the end of, the end of their password. All right. So it's really important to have fun. Right? If you are trying to figure out what you're going to do with your life, you should figure out something that's going to be because you're going to have to do it. And doing work all the time sucks. But doing something kind of fun, or at least kind of fun sometimes, is pretty, it's pretty awesome. So I would suggest learn how to have computers, because it's really fun. But maybe you like playing video games. So play video games and learn how to have video games. Or maybe you like designing bridges. So Learn how to break bridges. If you're catching on to a theme here, it's probably that I think you should look for ways to challenge what is normal. Right? Don't be the corporate sheep that flows along the path that does the same thing as everybody else. Be the troll. Be the guy who comes into the room, or the girl that comes into the room and says, your ideas suck. The thing that you think about designing windows is all wrong. The thing that you think about planting trees is all wrong. And the only way to do that is to just think adversarially. Now, you don't have to be a, a huge 
debug to people all the time. You don't have to go around making lots of enemies. But if you think like this, you'll almost always have something ready to say in the event that someone's getting a little too high on their horse, right? Does anyone want to yell stuff at me? So yeah, don't stop trolling. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of my meticulously <laughs> prepared talk. Uh, I think we're running out of time probably fairly shortly, but I have no idea. I would love to just have like a Q&A session with you guys, or maybe with all the people, or yeah. any questions anywhere that people want to throw around. Can you, can you talk about doing that script? Are you, do, you, do you have access to the person's computer, or how, how are you running the script? Are you running it remotely? Yeah. Or is so, it after you get access, which presumed, which is presumed that you have access to the computer itself? Yeah, so here's how you normally get access, right? Here's me, here's my laptop. Um, I'm evil, like a bad face there. You have some company here, this is their network. You've got lots of people inside, right? They go out typically and they talk to things like email, and they talk to things like chat, which is how I'm going to try and send someone a file. So I'm going to talk to them through chat, send them a file. When they double click that file, what's going to happen is I will have some server out here. Let's make this look like a server. Pretty awesome, right? I'll have some server, and then what this will do is it will take the command prompt from their system, right? Terminal or you know, CMD in Windows. And it will basically just send the inputs to that to my server. And then I'll be able to type whatever I want on their system and execute any commands. Right. I'll come out to my server, and I'll talk to them, and I'll be able to execute commands. Now at this stage of the attack, I don't have any access to their password, I don't have the ability typically to become root, I'm just that user. Now if I want to do something like interesting, I want to do something, uh, I want to be able to take stuff from the system, I'm going to need root privileges. Now how do you get root privileges as a user typically? You type your password to become administrators. Keyloggers work too. Although, most of the time, you'll need to be root to install a keylogger. Because on OS X, you have the system devices and all this stuff that blocks you from doing it. Uh, on Linux, in order to log other people's terminals or to dump their keystrokes, you'll, you'll need to be root. Um, so there's a similar trick to that, that script that pops stuff off. Also for Windows, you can do it using PowerShell. Um, one time we did it using Java. Anyone taking a Java class? Yeah. See, it might actually be interesting or useful later on. It's definitely not interesting. <laughs> uh, so what we did was we made this because we couldn't run any programs that weren't whitelisted already on the system. That's something called Bit9, which is application whitelisting, and basically says if you're not in the whitelist of the allowed programs to run, you don't get to run. But Java was in the whitelist, so we can write any Java code we want. Java will execute it. Java will do our stuff. So what we did was we took the Windows lock screen and we made that the background for this Java program that is full screen. And then we put a little text box in the middle where they could type their password. <laughs> and we just ran the Java program and it just looked like the computer locked. But really it's Java running on top in the normal thing. Uh, that worked in two seconds and we had the password to Windows and we were able to continue on there. That's a pretty long explanation for it. Any other questions? So, with a uh, little to no experience, I was one kind of like crack into the field. It sounds kind of interesting being given the blessings of that company to crack into. Cool. Um, so little to no experience. What do you know about? Do you know about programming? Sure. Do you know about how to administer a system? Not really? Okay, so you're coding. Play to your strengths. That's how you're going to get the biggest gain, gain for your buck. Um, my personal advice is find security CTFs. They will give you so much hands-on, real-world experience. You can pick up a book. Um, John Erickson's Hacking the Art of Exploitation. I don't have internet. It's not going to actually do anything. We should be having the, uh, the Wi-Fi thing. It's fine. Okay. And then, I think we'll have the, if the other two speakers want to come up, um, we can have them go up and uh, answer questions as well. If you guys feel like doing that. I recommend buying this book, 
and searching Smash the Stack uh, War Game, which is a which is basically a series of levels that will allow you to use things that you learn in the book. And this is um, software exploitation. So if you're writing C code or uh, assembly language stuff, have you, you guys taken any classes on C or assembly? So it's basically how to use that to do things like buffer overflows. And then format string vulnerabilities. And then so on and so on and so forth. The book kind of guides you through it and then the uh, war game actually like makes you figure it out which one to use where and such. They kind of go along together, even though they weren't made to. Do we have to leave the room? Yeah. So if this, you guys want, can we move our Q and A to the next room over? The computer science lab. We'll have our speakers in there.